Late veteran journalist Karima Brown was remembered by colleagues and family as a forceful voice in South African media and society at large. Brown's memorial took place at Sacred Heart College in Observatory Johannesburg this morning. Over a week after she was laid to rest in West Park Cemetery, she died of COVID-19 related complications at the age of 53. They said that um, we were eight, us, the SABC eight. But we knew there was a very loud member of the group, and she was the ninth one. They said that the eight of us all worked there. But the ninth one they knew, and she was out of reach and could not be fired or silenced. In all our plotting, the planning of our legal strategy, she put the teams together. Uh, and interviewing her was a little like, you know, standing behind a jet engine uh, just before it gets switched on. And when it does come on, when Karima started talking, which lasted for about an hour, um, non-stop. Um, uh, it's like having your hair blown off. You get blown down the runway. And I know that uh, when it finished, I had learned more about South African politics. I have two pictures in my mind of the young activist. One is Karima outside a church in Rocklands, picking up a stone and throwing it with all her might at a passing police van. The other is Karima banging a fist so hard on my round table in my kitchen in Sona End Street, arguing and fighting with Tyrone and Peter and po about politics and action and how things should be done. I wish Karima was conscious now to fight with that same force against this COVID enemy. And to talk a little bit more about this, her friend and colleague Eusebius McKaiser, who's also a radio talk show host and political analyst, a very good evening to you. Condolences once again to you, Eusebius. Just looking at that collection of people who spoke um, on uh, behalf of Karima, who spoke of Karima, we didn't see some of them, including her son. Uh, Michael had some moving words to say about what he learned from his mother. And we also had ministers there. Is this indicative of her body of work, the legacy uh, that she has fought so hard for? Good evening, uh, Tabiso, and also to the viewers of SABC. Absolutely, it is. I think it's very difficult to be indifferent to Karima. And that is music to the ears of any employer when it comes to media, especially talk radio, which is also part of her legacy, is that she moved the needle with many debates. I think it's early to talk about legacy, but let's frame a couple of legacy questions at least that her passing in the early days raises about her. Firstly, a lesson and then a question. On the lesson side, in an age of disinformation, misinformation, Karima's journalism was evidence sensitive. She was a nerd when it came to being factually detailed in her magisterial preparation for a show like The Fix on the NCA, for example. She brought the same magisterial interest intellectually to the table as a producer, not just as a broadcaster. Uh, for example, on SAFM many years ago, working with the likes of John Perlman, uh, Aris Gheer, Karima was always nerdishly interested in the facts, Sapiso. But her passing also raises questions that we will debate as members of the commentariat, but also as media practitioners. Just one, as a taste of that legacy questions that she raises, is the question of the role of the journalist in the making of a better society. Should you and I simply describe or should we try and change the world with our pens, with our mics, with our TV cameras? She took a position on that question. And I think many a journalism school can take the Karima view and frame a wonderful, very now debate about journalism. Should we aspire to neutrality, whatever that means, 
or should journalism deliberately have an activist slant? Mm. That's just a taste of her legacy. So let's talk about that, um, Eusebius, and I'm glad you raised it because some of it has been uncomfortable, and, and rightly so. This is exactly what Karima sought because she impacted on, she influenced uh, uh, the media fraternity in this way, and as you say, um, she certainly had an opinion, and a lot of people had an opinion about her. That was evident mm -hmm. when she died, and the kind of conversations that came out of it. Talk to me about what you thought about that and, and what you think she would have thought about that. Firstly, she would have been utterly nonplussed. And many supporters, quote-unquote fans, on behalf of her that are riled up by, for example, bile, pure hatred, or misogynistic violence, would be more concerned as a bystander caring about her than she would be as an actor within society and acting on society in part with her journalism. Because Karima grew, Karima grew up in the 80s as a political animal and therefore the Karima that enters journalism is a political animal. She wanted to get her hands dirty and she understood, rightly or wrongly, based on her biography, that politics is about contestation and that ideas within journalism are about contestation. And Peter Bruce summed it up we didn't play that part of the clip now, but viewers who watched earlier would have n remembered a sentence from him where he says, her passing is a political event. And, and so it's absolutely true. She would have celebrated the debate that her death occasions, but what she would have bemoaned is an anti-intellectualism that often you will find on media plat social media platforms like Twitter, for example, Tepiso. But there's nothing uncomfortable here. There's no discomfort here. What she is doing is dragging lazy journalists out of their comfort zone and say, come on, Sepiso, if we watch 100 episodes of The Full View, we can infer your politics. And just because I'm unambiguous about mine doesn't mean that you are a blank slate when you go to the SABC to go and present the full view. She'd want to force us to have that debate. Okay, and it's such a pity. I, want to, I wanted to actually uh, continue with that discussion and answer that question, you see, because, but unfortunately we are going back to Ketum Tanda in KwaZulu Natal, Eusebius Makaiza, who is a radio talk show host and political analyst speaking about Karima Brown.